Thank you for everyone joining us, joining us this evening, Thursday. I see a couple of fam familiar names out there. So um, unfortunately, I cannot see or hear you. So feel free to enter any comments or questions in the chat box and Sal will um, coordinate that with me. So anyway, welcome to online reviews. Reviews, reviews, reviews for the next hour and a half, okay? So let's have some fun. It's gonna be very engaging and wanted to, on behalf of Miller Business Center and PS Digital, thank you once again for attending. Um, this, this slide, I'm gonna show, we're gonna share a slide presentation with you along with live examples, whether it's your own business I could use. If you want to let us know the business name, I could enter it in and use you as an example, your business as an example, or I have other examples I can use to illustrate um, what it is we're discussing. So anyway, so digital, <clears throat> I'll just talk to this screen briefly. The digital presence is of utmost importance more and more ever. Even the pandemic just accelerated people's um, connectivity to the internet. Um, everyone is connected. They have to be connected, whether it's work-related, um, whether it's just communicating with coworkers, whether it's just basically um, more of a survival tactic now to be connected. Um, so as business owners, we want to show you how to leverage this connection and how to win over and gain more business from your com competition out there. So we do have the ability as business owners to, um, um, to help people find what they're looking for, um, how they find you, and where they find you, okay? If I could just get my, uh, my lovely mouse to work here. My name is Brian Ladani, I'm with uh, PS Digital. Um, Danielle is on the line as well. So we are currently uh, located in Hopog. We recently moved from Edgewood to Hopog, probably about two weeks ago. So thank you for having us. This evening's agenda, these are the items we're going to be discussing, which platform is best to generate reviews on, your current online presence, which we find a lot of business owners don't take a look at. Um, we'll go over that as well, why, you're on, why online reviews are important, how to generate more online reviews, when and how to ask for reviews, how to respond to the positive reviews, and just as important, the negative reviews. Why third-party review sites are important and where it shows. And some final reminders um, and some final thoughts, some tips I could share with you at the end that are going to be priceless. What to expect this evening? We encourage participation. Sal mentioned if you have any questions or comments, enter them into the chat box and we'll address it. He'll address it accordingly. Interaction, um, if you want to put in your business name or even your website, please feel free. Could, could use you as an example, your business as an example. And questions are always welcomed throughout. We obviously before the pan, before 2020, we put on these workshops for the colleges, the associations, chambers, and it was always fun doing it live. But via the Zoom, um, interaction, we find it just as effective because you have the luxury of um, being comfortable at wherever you are and you have the computer screen in front of you and you're paying attention. And so, um, so we're excited about that. We're making the best of what we have. Um, this here, which platform is best to generate reviews on? Number one is Google and I'll tell you why. Over the past 12 months in the United States, there's 88.62% of people use Google when searching for a product or service. That's why we talk about Google, 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 okay? And also too, from 2019 to 2020, it was a huge jump. It went from, it's 72% written a review for a local business, a jump from 66% in 2019. So not only was it the biggest platform to generate reviews on because that's where people are searching for your product or service, but it's only just gaining strength and that momentum is unstoppable right now. So we're gonna be discussing Google, 
um, a lot throughout this evening. The second <clears throat> biggest platform you want to generate reviews on is Facebook. It's a 65%, 65.84% over the last 12 months in the United States. That's where people are going to get their social fix. They're on their social platform. They're looking at recommendations and reviews. So that's another huge segment of the population where your customers are browsing, surfing, and searching, okay? So it's Google and Facebook. Just so everyone knows, the next two items or next three <clears throat> platforms to generate reviews on is Yelp, TripAdvisor, and Yellow Pages, okay? But the two we're gonna deal with tonight is Google and Facebook. All right, this is pretty big. Uh, we've been doing this for many, many years, and it doesn't surprise me how many businesses out there don't actually perform a Google search on themselves. So if you can, if you're on the desktop or if you have a mobile device, you go to google.com, go to this, the query, go to the, the box. And if you can, type in your business name and town. Basically, you're looking for yourself. Um, I will use us as an example. And if anyone else wants us to use them, I'm looking for PS Digital. I heard about this company. They're a pretty good marketing agency. Heard about them at a cocktail party, wanted to do, vet them. I'm gonna go to do a search for ourselves. So it says here, this is your Google My Business page and here are the reviews. Okay, five-star average, 70 reviews, lots of information on the Google map listing, which we won't get into, but we'll, we'll discuss the reviews here. People typically will open this reviews here and they will take a look at what's going on with the reviews. Just as important as what your customers are saying or your colleagues or people you do business about you, it's just as important as replying as well. So you'll see, we reply to, if not all of these reviews, I think we have a few we just received, but that's one thing you want to do. If you did notice, my name is up here, Brian Ladani. I did write a review for ourselves. I don't lie. I didn't say I used PS Digital, but I said we are located in Edgewood, which we now are in Hop Hog. Um, we uh, build custom, um, we exceed expectations, so on and so forth. So just in case if you were wondering about that. So that's, that's, the, that's when you do a Google search for yourself, your business name and your town. Take a look, how many reviews do you have? Do you like what you see? Is it under four stars? Is it over four? How many reviews do you have? And if you don't have a Google My Business, that's a whole nother conversation. You should have a map listing. Um, that basically is called your search engine result, results page or your SERP page. Okay, your search engine results page on Google. Okay, that's what you look like. And moving right along, if anyone, um, Sal, if anyone wants to share their business name, I could take a look. I see Roberta's on here. I think Digital Destinations. Um, we could take a look at her. I'm going to kind of, it's called, um, oh, she's going to kill me. It's called Destination Accessible. We also have Roxy's ice cream catering truck. Okay, she's on here too? Yeah, it's another business. Awesome. All right, destination accessible, I think is Roberta with four reviews with a five star, building it up very nicely. Once again, keep in mind, this is for people that are searching directly for you. They wanna, they wanna vet you, um, they wanna see what you, they wanna see what it is you do, what's your telephone number, your address, your website, and the reviews are always there. So pay attention to them. Let's take a look at Roxy's as well. I don't know where Roxy's is located, but Roxy's, what is it, Sal? Roxy's? Roxy's ice cream catering truck. Ice cream catering. Let's just do a quick search. We are, we just had dinner. We are starving. We are hungry for dessert. Let's go to Roxy's. And let's take a look at what she has. Okay, five stars. She has a five-star average. Okay, fine. 
trending in the right direction, both of you, Roberta and Roxy, um, with a five-star average for, let's see if you're replying to reviews. Oh, there goes Brian, I know Roberta. I'll get to that later, why and how to generate reviews. Response to Roberta is doing everything perfect. And Roxy's, let's take a quick peek. One thing you can do is just try to reply to these reviews when you get a chance. And if you don't, the only way you're, this is later on in the workshop, the only way you're gonna be able to reply to these reviews on your Google map listing is if you have access to this map listing. If anyone needs help getting access to the map listing, feel free, um, contact us. We'll, we'll put you in the right direction as far as gaining pr primary ownership access so you can reply to your reviews. So that's, thank you for sharing those. Well, I'm gonna kick, kick these to the side over here. Um, Destination Accessible and Roxy's Ice Cream Catering. One more if you wanna put one in. Sure, let's do it. It's uh, Elima dash draft, E-L-I-M-A dash D-R-A-F-T, incorporated in Setauket. You hear my dogs in the background. two of them here they're gonna start alma draft here it is alima draft inc she's in isa talk it okay fine <clears throat> it seems to me you don't have access to this map listing because the business hours aren't here let me take a look at the website and i'm gonna i'll keep this what do you do sales about i just want to take a quick peek what you do um, there's Elma Draft overnight about house, housewares association. I'm going to do magnet HVAC vent covers. Okay, fine. Okay. So basically here, let's just go back. There's no reviews here. So this is something you could definitely work on. I'm going to give you some actionable steps that you can do to number one, probably want to claim this as your business in, in the event you don't already, I'll tell you who has access to this. It'll take me two seconds just to kind of help you out. I'm gonna to go to Google My Business, get out of here. There's a way you could, <clears throat> I just gotta move some things over, paste this. So whoever has access to that business, no, nah, I don't think you do. It's not showing me anything, but we could talk later about that map listing. But thank you for sharing. Um, so once again, that's a perfect example of why you want access to your Google map listing is because when you st start generating these reviews after this workshop, you'll be able to reply to them. Um, some of the top reasons why reviews are important. Let me just kind of fast forward this. There should be six of them here. <clears throat> All right, number one is trustworthy and credibility. Um, now that more people than ever are connected to the internet, trustworthy and credibility is paramount. Um, you want that, you want to create that powerful first impression and those reviews are going to give that to that potential client. They could trust you because other people have trusted you, that you're credible because you are doing business in the area, you are generating reviews, you actually rank higher as well in the map listing. So if someone's searching for um, any product or service in your local area and all things equal, but you have more reviews than your competitors, you will serve up higher on the map listing, which is a free map listing. Completely free, take advantage of it, get control, start generating reviews and you'll pick up some nice local business. You're gonna see an increase in click-through rates. Um, people like doing business with um, trustworthy, credible, um, you know, five-star, anything over 4.5 average um, ratings on your map listing. People are going to gravitate towards you. They're gonna convert. You're gonna convert those searches into leads and sales. Um, that's what we're here for. We all have businesses. We all want to promote ourselves. We all want more business. So those reviews will definitely see an increase. I have a couple of, excuse me, I have a couple of dogs in the background. But um, anyway, so bringing in new customers as well. 
So when people are doing a search for your product or service and they're comparing you amongst your competitors, that, and if you actually think about it, when you do go online yourselves and you're considering a product, you definitely look at the reviews and what the average is, and you'll start reading those reviews and that will sway your decision one way or the other. So instead of leaving that kind of on the, you know, leaving that up to them, make the decision for them, make it easy, make it an easy yeah. decision for them. Um, with anything over a 4.5, we'll definitely push them over the fence. So here's a couple of statistics. There's actually, um, there's a few of them down here. 93% of consumers used the internet to find a local business in the last year. 34% search every day. I think we already know the importance of being online and just the, the reviews coupled with that will just you know, lend itself for more business. 87% of consumers read online reviews for local businesses up from 81%. So more and more people are reading these reviews. Um, when you do generate reviews, you want your clients to be as thorough as possible, kind of instead of just having them write a five-star review with no comment, you kind of want to have them go the extra mile and say what they did and what they bought from you, what was the service like, what was their experience. If you're able to get that existing client to share in detail um, what their experience was, you'll be able to, that, that goes a long way because people read those reviews and they'll get a better understanding of how you operate and the services you provide and the satisfaction that you give your, your clients, your existing clients. So that, that's trending, that's from 87% in 2020, up from 81 in 2019, 31% the top right over here. 31% of consumers say they read more reviews in 2020 because of COVID-19, while 34% read fewer. So basically more and more people are reading these reviews and it's just that much um, more important that it's detailed thorough and that you're replying to these reviews. 67% of consumers said they wouldn't use a business if reviews said it didn't have a COVID-19. This kind of relates to the Google map listing on the dashboard on the info section. There is a COVID-19 update. You want to just make sure you're filling that out completely. Masks are required. You're disinfecting in between visits. Whatever it is, um, it just goes to show you right here. Um, 67 wouldn't, says it wouldn't use a business if reviews said it didn't have a COVID-19 health and safety measures in place. So make sure you take advantage of that. Okay, moving right along. The most important review factors, it should be five here. Number one is a star rating. If you have anything under a four, the two Roxy's and that destination accessible, Roberta has a five star, which is great. If you have anything under a four star average, it's affecting your business. You could always count the amount of referrals you are getting, but you can't count the ones you're not getting by having that south of four star average. So 48% of consumers wouldn't even consider doing business anything under four stars, legitimacy. I think that speaks to itself. We'll get into the Better Business Bureau shortly. Number three is recency. You want to, you want to make sure that you have, depending on when you have access to your Google map listing, keep generating reviews frequently. <clears throat> it says here, 73% of consumers only pay attention to reviews written in the last month. So get, set a game plan for generating reviews. This way it doesn't go stagnant. This way it's not two years ago you received your last review. It was a year ago you received your last review. Right here, the recency, 73% of the, they pay attention. When was the last review? Okay, sentiment people's opinion here, when writing a review, 20% of consumers expect to receive a written a response. 
so it's just it just goes to show you not only having access to that map listing obviously you're going to have access to your facebook business page because you probably created that page but you definitely want to reply to all these reviews right here 20 percent of consumers expecting to receive a uh, a response within one day you know whether one day or three days but don't let anything go over a week <clears throat> you get caught up in your own business I'll address at the end one of the tips. You want to have that Google My Business icon on your phone. This way you'll be alerted once you do receive a review and you can reply to it rather quickly. Um, if you did not reply to a review and it's been some time, maybe six months, I don't know, better late than never, I always say just reply to that review. It's better to get it up there than not to have any response at all. So, and I know Roberta and Roxy's, I think, did Roxy have, what was Roxy's, is she? Let me take a quick peek, five reviews. <clears throat> yes, she's, oh yeah, so Roxy could, even though the four days ago, four, four days, four days, why is this four days ago? That's interesting. <clears throat> okay, well, four days ago, definitely, um, you're well within the week, you know, try to do it within one to three days. But um, so you're right there, Roxy. This should be number five here. Okay, quantity. This is huge. You should really learn what your competition has out there. For all of you who are in the service industry, whatever industry you are in, take a look at what your competition is, how many reviews they have. Um, use that as a goal get anything 10 to 20 reviews over what they have and um, some businesses are tough I mean we represent a lot of plumbers and electricians and just tree service where the competitors I mean they're well over even pool companies 200 300 400 reviews um, for example just to show you what you can be doing <clears throat> there's a company Manzo plumbing and heating he has, he's up to 359 reviews here. So if you're a plumber, you know, and you're competing with Manzo with a 4.8 average out of 359, I mean, that just speaks volumes to the type of business he does that that many people write a review and keeping that average at that 4.8. So learn what your competition has and then up it by at least 10 to 20 reviews and use that as a goal. Quantity does matter. Okay, we're gonna move on. <clears throat> so basically how to generate more reviews. Let me just see something. Okay, we missed one there, okay. So when generating reviews, it's, you know, it's easier said than done. I will, uh, you know, admit that or concede to that. But you want to be relentless. Um, we there's a lots of our clients out there that fight. Like there's a there's a chef Matthew Alexander in Nassau County. He literally fights for every review. He can and if it's not in your personality to be a to be a, a um, to be persistent in a non-aggressive manner, it's something you may want to, you know. You don't have to play it that way. Here's, here are certain ways to generate. I'll just kind of get into this. You could definitely send an email. You could do a drip campaign if you want. Automate review follow-ups, add a review link in your email signature. That's easy. Um, will people click it? No, you want to kind of nudge people, kind of give them a poke, let them know it's there. Make it easy for them. There are links on your Google map listing that you can copy and paste in this way when but when your customer does click this link, it takes them right to the Google map listing and entices them to write the review. Facebook as well. And I'll address, I know I'm talking mainly about Google right now, but Facebook is just as easy. All right. You may want to do an email blast to your current customers. That's pretty, you know, just draft something, take a day to write something nice. You could just shoot one whether you use constant contact or MailChimp, whatever it is, you could even do one-offs. The review badge on your website is pretty important. I'll show you a few examples. Um, there's a contractor S and S roofing. 
Oh, I'm picking the wrong one. SNS. SNS construction. I can't even type. I'll get it in a second. Just bear with me. This website. So, for example, SNS Roofing, they have a pop up here, but review us on Google, they have a link. So, they, he makes it easy putting it on his website, whether it's in your header, whether it's in your footer. Um, it's just in his header up here. That's easy enough. Go to my website, SNS Roofing and Sardine.com. Just click the review link. So he's making it easy. How many reviews does Justin have? I know I definitely wrote him a review and it kind of canceled this. He's up to 19 with a 4.8 average. Okay, he's definitely, let's see if he's replying. Reply, 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 yep, yep, yep. So he's, he's doing everything right. Okay, that's good. So that's the first thing you can do. Or I should say this uh, third thing you do, Google review badge on your website. Incentivize your team to get more reviews. <clears throat> if you're in the service industry, you can entice your existing, um, your employees when they, there's a pool company that when they perform an opening or a closing, he gives his, his uh, service technicians, you know, a, a Dunkin' Donuts gift card, the more reviews they get. He sets a certain quota. For example, if you get five reviews, he'll give them a couple of bucks for a nice, uh, a nice uh, dinner. So you can incentivize your team to get reviews if they are engaging with their clients after the, after the service is performed. The, the quickest way you can do this, and I think Roberta and I have done this, anyone who's part of these different networking uh, groups, whether they're chambers, associations, even the Miller Business Center, you can write each other reviews. I mean, I've gone to so many different um, networking events, chamber events, association of events, and everyone knows each other there. I know, I know this person, I've been coming to this group for a year, and the best thing to do at that point is just to write each other a review. Never lie when you write the review, be honest, be sincere. I know this person, um, I've been dealing with him for two years, he's trustworthy, I hear a lot of good things his clients say, I would definitely use him, I had him come over, whatever the case is, but write each other reviews. Um, I know the, not the Miller Business Center was interesting. Um, if we do a Google search for them, they empower small to medium sized businesses on Long Island, and they've been around for many, many years. Um, I take a look at that. They're a perfect example of what they can do, the amount of businesses they help that write reviews to the Miller Business Center. They should easily have over 100 reviews. Um, and currently, I'm not going to put them on the spot, but anyone who has used them, as we're using them this evening, um, working in conjunction with them, definitely write a review for Miller Business Center. Just Google search them, Miller Business Center, write a review, um, be honest, give them that five-star review, tell them what they've done for you or what they do for the community, and let, let the other business owners know. So that's just a few quick ways to obtain and generate more reviews. Moving right along. Sal, any questions or anything, or it's kind of? No questions yet. I'll keep an eye on it for you. Awesome. Thank you so much. The, this, uh, when asking. Great information so far. Okay, good. Thanks, Sal. So um, when asking for review, oh, we're missing number one. Poof. Okay. When asking for reviews, ask when I'll, you know, we have, you can't make everyone happy. You can make 99 out of 100 people happy, which is great. Ask the 99 people for a review. You know, that one person that you could, no one ever can make happy, fine. Leave them alone. Why even bother? Don't go down that road. You don't have the time or energy to um, deal with it. But your, your happiest customers, 
that's who you're going to ask. It's common sense, but I just wanted to throw it out there. Do it when the services are completed, not during, not very much at the beginning. If you meet someone at a networking group and they don't really know you too well, you know, maybe, maybe wait six months, nine months until there is some interaction with each other and you can learn more about them. They can learn more about you and that develop that relationship develops. So when the services are completed, there's a company Sweeney's pools, obviously when his pool openings or closings are completed, let's see how Sweeney's are doing just to kind of throw a couple of names out there. Sweeney's pools. Well, let's just do his pools in Old Brook. He's up to 190 reviews and, and definitely counting. He better be replying to these reviews. Thank you. Not that one, not that one. Here he is. So he's, he's, it's his busy season. So maybe this is three months ago. This is a year ago. You could, you could throw this in order. Where's the order newest? I could, th so this is five, two months ago. People will do this just to kind of get clarity on, you know, what they're doing nowadays. I don't really care what your reviews were two years ago, three years ago. That's great. But, you know, what's your most, that recency, what's your most recent reviews? Anything within the six month span or within a one month span. So that's why it's always important to have some strategy in place to keep the reviews coming in. We at PS Digital, sometimes we get so cooped up in our, we all get cooped up in our work and a month goes by, three months goes by and we're like, oh, what are we doing? We're not even asking for reviews. You got to just remind yourself or put something in place. Uh, I'm going to address, there are some different review, um, third-party review sites that you can use for a monthly subscription that will do a drip campaign to your existing accounts. So you can do that as a reminder. You can make it an effort once a week, but the people, I will say this. I know the reviews, reviews, reviews. The people that put in the most amount of effort in getting reviews, they reap the rewards. I mean, we have roofers out there, over 300. The Manzos, the Plumbers, over 300 reviews with over a 4.5, even a 4.8 average. They, and I'm not saying no one's putting the effort in here, but I'm saying once you do put that effort in, um, every business is different. They're more related on the service end. Um, but even still, it's paramount that these reviews come in steadily. Um, this way you're satisfying those people that want to see recent reviews. You know, so you're, you're trying to satisfy a lot of these different statistics that we spoke about earlier. So that's Sweeney's Pools. Move on. I'm going to kind of let's just let, let me draft. Okay. When service is completed, how to ask for reviews. You just, you know, I, on, on this thing, you could just put simply just ask. You know, just um, I know I think Roberta asked me. She, um, she was on the workshop and, you know, I think we did a Zoom call after that and she had some questions on how to and she just asked me, she was Brian, right? You know, can you, so I took a look at her website and knew all about her business, what she does. She's awesome. She does these, these um, descriptions and um, she goes to different places on Long Island, experiences it. And she's able to articulate that experience on her website, which if you're not, if you're looking for a different place to go on Long Island, you could look at her suggestions or where she's been, read her description of it. If it entices you, you and the family, um, you and your partner go out and have a great time. And I read her, I went on her website and it was amazing. I'm like, oh my Lord, I didn't even know about this place existed on Long Island and it just sounds so great. I have to go. So um, I don't know where I was going with that, but I think, uh, so she just asked me to write her a review and I did. And I was like, this website is awesome. Very detailed, very thorough, very knowledgeable. So you could email or text message. Um, text message marketing is a whole different conversation, but if you had a choice, I would definitely, depends how well you know your customer. If you're on that texting 
basis. Definitely shoot the text rather than an email that gets kind of lost. But um, you could do it in person after the service we discussed. You could do it on a receipt or an invoice. If it's you're sending an invoice via email, something clickable. That link, that link on the Google map listing, let me just kind of show you where it is. It's, it's so easy what you can do. I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to pull up a business. Uh, I don't even know. Hmm. Let me just kind of grab one. Uh, no, no. Andy Sabota will pick. He's just, he's in the A's. So for example, this is the back end of the Google My Business page. If I go to info, if you go to home, you're going to see reviews. You're going to see somewhere, ask, ask to manage, complete your business, get more reviews. Here it is. Okay. So share review form. All you do is click this. This is the link. It's probably already, the link is already copied. I come up here. I go paste. So this goes right to there. So I can write them a five star. I write blah, 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 whatever I want to write. Cancel. Uh, you sure you want to discard? Yes. <clears throat> so that link is right here on your Google My Business page. You could, once again, copy this. You could go to a Word document. And what you do from there, I'm sure everyone knows you could just play paste it here and then you can actually even just change this hyperlink. Once I make it a hyperlink and you could just, what I like to do sometimes edit hyperlink, you go up here, these click here to write Andy an awesome five, an awesome review, an awesome review, if I could spell, review, I'm out of my review, Google. Thank you, Did everything, whatever, okay. I could just copy this and put in my signature at the end and it's just basically a hyperlink you guys know the deal, I click this, I click this and it'll go, poof. It's that easy. So Google's actually making it easy. You just gotta find, you gotta know where to find this information. It's all on your Google My Business page. I will share Facebook. Facebook's interesting. I'll go to Facebook and discuss their reviews. Um, this is the second biggest platform you want reviews to go on. Um, I could pick a business. I, uh, you know, let's do who destination. Pick on Roberta accessible. What does she got going on here? Destination acceptable, accessible. <clears throat> so I go to here. Here's her reviews. Facebook's interesting. Do you recommend destination accessible? Yes, I do. I'm not going to, what I, what you can tell people, whatever review they wrote on Google, they literally could just copy and paste it. So I'm going to do this just as a live example. So if I go to Google and I put in that destination accessible here, I'm going to go to reviews. I know I wrote her one. I'm going to just copy this. I could go back here and let's see what I wrote. Destination Accessible is an awesome website that gives detailed information on so many restaurants and places on Long Island. My wife and I have lots of fun visiting the website and exploring new locations and destinations. Thank you, Roberta, for developing and updating an amazing website. Heck yeah. So you just, so Facebook used to be the five-star averages. They've since I don't even know how long ago, two years, a year and a half ago, they've changed it to more of this recommendation stuff. So if I hit post, it's probably, we'll see most helpful, most recent. It's gonna, okay, fine, so there it is. Five, I'm sure, you know, it's gonna have to take a little time to digest. So she's up to 10, so that was pretty quick. <clears throat> so if, if you do have that relationship with people where they can just copy what they wrote on 
um, Google, no one's gonna, Google really doesn't know the reviews you wrote and Facebook doesn't, they don't say, oh, we copied. So don't think like that. Just have them copy and paste it, maybe change a couple of words or maybe update it, whatever the case may be. <clears throat> but that's Facebook. Make sure your reviews button is there. If it's not, there is a setting that you can access it. So if you say to yourself, my business Facebook page doesn't have a reviews button, just give us, uh, give me a quick buzz. I'll show you how to get it. All right, where were we? Andy Sabota. So that was where this link is, share review form. Okay. <clears throat> how many reviews does he have? Info, you on search. Andy has zero. This is, see, as a private golf instructor, he needs to make an effort to put into these because that will definitely help him. That will push over a lot of people that are considering his services. I'm, I'm just stating the obvious, so we'll just move on. <clears throat> That's that hyperlink you could do. Oh, actually I have a Word document, cancel. Social media, over the phone, on the business card, third party platforms, there's items. We have we have a product we use that's awesome. It's a drip campaign. All you have to do is fill it with email addresses or cell phone numbers, and it attacks them in both ways. If they don't respond in one day, it goes out another three days as a friendly reminder. After three, if it doesn't happen, it's after seven days. So it's a, it's a drip campaign, very effective. There's bird eye out there. There's some more expensive ones, but do you due diligence? Take a look, it's they're definitely helpful. <clears throat> what is, let me just see one thing. When responding to, okay, so this is the responding to positive and negative reviews. We'll do positive first. Positive reviews are fun. Um, obviously, it's a nice five-star average. You have a nice relationship with the person. You want to respond quickly. We already said one to three days. Don't let it go over seven. You want to keep it short. You want to keep their review on a decent, not lengthy, but not on the short side. You want to just keep it just enough to explain what product or service they, you performed for them and how it went but your reply should be short and that's very effective by replying. People read not only the reviews, but the responses kind of feel out the business owner on just your character, your demeanor. And so uh, just be sincere, be yourself, be authentic. Oh, here it is, be authentic and, and personal. Invite them to take action. Invite them to take action. Probably you want to, uh, that's interesting, yeah. Share the positive, take action to write that, uh, share that positive review on their business, on their personal page, um, just to share it along social media. They could, like my post I did for Roberta, if I want to grab this, <clears throat> I could just copy and I could, I could, I could just kind of share this. I go here, I could share it on my personal page, which my X amount of friends will get. So that's one thing you can do. <clears throat> oh, there's a statistic, that's what I was waiting for. The um, amongst consumers that read reviews, 97% read businesses responses to reviews. So that's why it's important um, to kind of keep it short to respond quickly, keep it authentic, and kind of have them uh, share those positive reviews on social media. Here's the good one now. Here's the here's the fun. The net well, it's not the fun part. The fun ones are the positive ones. The the not so much fun ones are the negative ones. It happens. Um, not to Roxy's, not to Roberto. We actually have a five star. I think we have one two star review in there. It got kind of flushed down, and we were able to get above four point nine. So now we're hanging out with a 5.0, but I kind of like the 4.9. It just makes us um, 
I'm not saying a 5.0 does not make you human, but a 4.9, um, we have no problem with a 4.9. So if you do get that one negative review, <clears throat> you know, you want to respond promptly to that as well. And there's a statistic here too. 45% of consumers say that they're more likely to visit a business that responds to their negative reviews. Always respond to your negative reviews promptly. But I would sleep, I would go to sleep at night, wake up in the morning with a fresh head. <clears throat> you had some time to digest that negative review and just um, be real, admit your mistakes. If it was your mistake, <clears throat> what you can do, <clears throat> excuse me, is if you're able to locate that person who wrote, who wrote that one-star review, that two-star review, I've done it plenty of times, there's two things you could do with negative reviews. You could try to reach out to that person. You could find their name, do a Google search for the name. If you're able to find their Facebook business page, write them a messenger, or if they're in your database, reach out to them. I've done this plenty of times for our clients. Very nicely, hey, my name is Brian. We understand you had a bad experience with us. It was a two-star average you gave us. Is there anything we could do to resolve this matter? Yeah, well, this happened, this happened. Rectify the situation. Let it digest on their end. Call them back in two, three weeks. Hey, hey, Tony, you know, we hope that we were able to resolve the situation. Could you go back and edit that review? That would be greatly appreciated. That does work. You can also flag a review if it made no sense, if it was not directed towards your business. It was an error and you're like, who the heck is this guy? There's such a thing on Google on um, on Google where you could flag reviews and you could let people know. Actually, I'll tell you what you could flag it with. Google has these off-topic spam, conflict of interest, profanity, there's bullying or harassment, discrimination or hate speech, or if there's any personal information, you could flag it, it'll come down. So that's another way. That's if those reviews are don't don't warrant. If it doesn't wasn't warranted, you can go about it those those ways. But correcting inaccuracies, highlight your strengths, you know, take advantage of it. Write like a person the next day, not like a corporation. And provide restitution if it's warranted. We just discussed that if you could reach out to them and don't start the back and forth on the platform and you know, try to rectify it that way. It's just gonna be a, don't create a mess. Um, be yourself, be authentic, and just respond accordingly. You will be fine. <clears throat> One thing you can do with negative reviews, you could let that be the stepping stone on your motivation to get more five-star reviews because you can flush that down. <clears throat> you know, that one review you got, maybe the 10th review. Now you have 35 stars. That 10th review will be so buried people may not even get to it um so that's definitely used as a motivation to get those those five star reviews all right what do we got third party review sites <clears throat> well um when you did that search for your business in the beginning and we did the roxies we did Destination Accessible. We did Alma Draft, Alima Draft, and, and Satorkit. <clears throat> I'll pull up a few here. If I look for like RM Steffens, they're a plumber. These third, what this slide here, third party review sites is referring to. Here's your map listing, which is fine, 10 stars. Let's see if he's replying. I wrote, you know, I, I know Robert. Bob was on point, blah, 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 blah. this, 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 fine. He replies, he's replying to a few of them. Okay, fine. This here is your third party, is your Yelp. He has five stars, okay, good. 
<clears throat> this here, he has, uh, he's on porch four. So his perception is reality. If someone just goes to this page, they'll see the 4.6. They'll see, the, they'll see lots of stars here, stars here, stars here. Okay, great. He looks pretty, he looks pretty credible. <clears throat> he looks like he's been in business for a while. People like his work. We can dive, we can dive all, we can dive, you know, open up this review and um, take a look at what people said about him, how he replied back if we want to as well. Another one, for example, <clears throat> would be, uh, Sweeney's pools, if I don't know them, I could see a 4.8 here on Facebook. I could see a 4.0 on Yelp. Home advisor with a 4.8 house, 3.7. Kenny should start working on this. You know, anything under a 4.0, anything under a 4.4, 4.5, kind of have a little problem with. And then here's a 4.4 on reviews bird eye. So these are your third party when people are searching for your business. These, these, um, Items, organic items are your third party platforms that do sway people's decision, your overall first impression on that search engine results page um, is right here. Let's just take a look. Let's, let's just say destination <clears throat> accessible. Let's see what third party, Facebook, five stars, nine votes, perfect. I think that should be 10, just gotta fizzle through. There's another one. That's just two Facebook business pages. That's fine. Let's see Roxy's. Where are you? Where are you, Roxy? <clears throat> Get rid of this. Facebook page 28. Damn, she's on. What is it? I'm too bad. I'm, uh, let's just take a quick peek. Oh, yeah. Ho, 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 ho. That looks really good. Uh, I want to find out where is she located. Um, <clears throat> she's a... She's an ice cream truck. Okay, I'll find out later. Probably find out on their website about NASA Suffolk. Find what makes when events good. So she caters to events across Long Island. She's got reviews. Oh, another thing you can do with your reviews, <clears throat> like uh, this one here, CMM. Let's take landscape supply. The bottom over here, you can, you do the button on the top. Where is the button? Button should be somewhere at the bottom. Here it is, a Google review button here. You can also do something in the middle. You can leave a review, write a review, leave a review. It's gonna to go to that page, write the five stars, say what you have to say. <clears throat> so you can, if I wanna read more, it'll take me the read, there they are. See responding. <clears throat> A week ago, two weeks ago, two weeks ago. Okay, that's fine. So you can put something on the website, just more than a badge on the footer or the um, on the footer or the header. You can put it right in the middle if you want. We find that that effective. And you can always tell people, hey, go to my website, cmmlandscapesupply.com, and you'll find a few different spots. Convenience. Making it for, making it convenient for people to write that review. Um, I will say this, people are impatient nowadays. People want everything at their fingertips. If they have to struggle to find something, the chances of them performing that task decreases significantly. So the easier make it for them to write the review, get directions to call you via the website, um, the, the, um, the more conversions you're going to see, the increase in sales you're going to see. Some people get frustrated easily and they just move on. I can't find this telephone number and they're making it impossible. Don't make it impossible for people to do business with you, especially when generating reviews. <clears throat> Let's get off all this. Oxys, I wanna see that big cone again. Where was that cone? Okay, we got a video, okay. Hi, my name is Elaine Piotrowski, and I'm a 100% woman-owned business. I own Ro All right, so that's Elaine. I was calling her Roxy, apologize for that. I'll watch the video later, it's two minutes long, I'm sure. I'm getting, I know it's uh, dinner time. 
So everyone just uh, hang tight. We have another half hour. I'm just gonna kinda, <clears throat> any questions up to this point? Pretty, pretty straightforward. I, I, I know I'm avoiding, you know, I'll address Yelp. I'll address, I'll address uh, Facebook now. I'm gonna dip into those. <clears throat> those are your third party. I'm gonna see the summary for the end. So Yelp, uh, who could I use as an example? Um, <clears throat> yeah, RM Steffens. I just saw something he had. He has Yelp here. Yelp is definitely a third party platform that you want to have claimed. This is unclaimed. He wants to claim it. He has a, he has, thank God he has two five star reviews here. Yelp is interesting. <clears throat> Once you, it is a free map listing, you can get with them. You want control over it. This way you could reply to those reviews. You're going to do Yelp for business owners. That's what you're going to want to download. Just be careful. They're going to harass you. Yelp to do advertising. Once you engage with them, they're going to be all over you. I get tons of cl clients of mine saying, oh my God, Yelp is just relentless. They want me to do four or five thousand dollars a month on their platform. But definitely get control over it because you want to clean these platforms and you do want to generate reviews. Yelp has something. If you scroll down, there's going to be some hidden reviews. Um, where are they? Zero reviews that are not. There's like a tab here that are not recommended. And they play a little game. Let's see SNS. Where's Yelp? They see here's Yelp for SNS with Justin. It's unclaimed. Um, they might have some Yelp. This the eight. See these. There's he has eight other reviews. This is why Yelp is like a little tricky. Right here, if you scroll down, eight other reviews that are not currently recommended. Let's open it up. Five star, five, I'm probably gonna be a Brian Ladani. As they did a great, they did work East Ice Slip on my house. Um, five star, five star, look at all these five star averages they have. The ones they're showing, if I go back, they're showing this one review. And let's read that review, where is it? Here it is, this person, Cynthia in Farmingville. <clears throat> on 2019, so it looks like two years ago. It's just, he has eight five-star reviews that Yelp doesn't feel like they want. They play a little hardball. I think once you start paying 300 to $500 a month, those reviews miraculously come to light and his average goes up. So the only thing Justin's been doing, he's been getting five-star reviews on this platform and they're just not showing. So it's just tough, Yelp is tough. Um, I would just recommend to Justin to keep getting those reviews and hopefully they start sticking. But um, I'm going back. That's, <clears throat> and then we'll jump into Facebook. Let's see his Facebook page. We kind of address this. You go to more, you'll see his reviews. He should move these reviews up a little bit more. I mean, he's so busy. The whole construction, the whole service industry catered around home and even destination accessible. I'm sure you're going to be slammed with people looking to, with cabin fever, looking to get out and explore different places. But the home service industry has just been gangbusters. They're just the swimming pools, the, the roofing, the siding, the... Um, how do you say there's no place like home um, is just off the charts. Let's take a look at his reviews. 26, five out of five. Last one is December, 2020. <clears throat> so he hasn't had any in 2021, but that's something, that's your Facebook, your Yelp we addressed. Definitely get control of these pages. Dress them up too. You're just kind of touch upon Facebook business page. Make sure your cover photo, your profile picture is in sync. Make sure they're formatted correctly. Once again, it's that 
what we're talking about with the reviews is a powerful, a powerful first impression. And not only the reviews are important, but just your whole branding. Um, if anyone wants to attend, we have a workshop regarding the importance of your logo at Miller Mornings, I believe it's on the 19th. It's on a Friday. Actually, it's probably the 16th. The 16th, we're going to be discussing the importance of your logo and how to brand it across multiple platforms online and how to how to structure that logo accordingly. Brian, I have a quick question. Shoot. Roberta asks, can a nonprofit be on Yelp or other third party review site? That's a good question. I believe so, Roberta. Any, let's just take a quick peek. Destination, ah, get out of here. Destination accessible. I believe, you know, as far as, <clears throat> I don't see why not. Um, they're, a, they're a resource of businesses, whether they're non for profit or not. So the more, the more businesses they're able to encompass within the Yelp platform or the Yelp family, um, just the better for them. So I can't see any reason why they wouldn't want a non for profit to have a listing at the very least on their page, but I don't know for sure. Um, you're probably going to want to contact um, Yelp and find out. Probably just do a Google search. We'll find out in two seconds. But um, great question. Be careful with Yelp. I would, if, if you're going to put time, if, if you don't see Yelp up here, if, you, if, if you're in the food industry, the bars, the restaurants, um, anything food related, Yelp is kind of like you have to play a little ball with them. As far as Roxy's is concerned, maybe some, you know, maybe let's just see if she has a, where are you, where are you, Elaine? Let me just go back. What's going on? <clears throat> Facebook. Um, here goes Flash. No, no, no. Okay. Either way, but good question, Roberta. Definitely check it out with Yelp. I would put my efforts onto that Google and Facebook. That's where a majority, I think, the effort should go. If you are limited on time, um, definitely look into it. But um, where were we? We're going to move on. Let me get rid of. She's po let's just take a let's. She's posting on her. Google. I won't go into Google my business right now. Um, let me get rid of this. RM Stephens a zero. Okay, we're going to get back to this slide. Kind of keeps me on point. Summary plus the summary as we slowly wind down the takeaways from this. Number one, take a look at your current online presence. Do you like what you see? I liked what I saw. I liked Roxy's. I liked Destination Accessible. I liked PS Digital. I liked, um, I, I didn't, I, not that I didn't like um, the other person, which was Alima, the, the HVAC place. It's not that I didn't like it. I like that he has a map listing or he, he or she has a map listing, but definitely want to get access and control of that and take advantage of the free map listing to generate reviews. Does he have a Facebook business page? Alma, <clears throat> Lima, excuse me. No, I'm not really sure, but so take a look at your current online presence, evaluate yourself amongst your peers, reply to all your current reviews within a timely fashion, which is huge. You wanna create a game plan, whether it's once a week, you're gonna um, put a strategy together to get more reviews, to ask for reviews. Um, definitely speak to your webmaster, get that badge on your website. Gather reviews on definitely Google number one, Facebook. I will mention BBB, the Better Business Bureau. There's one in every state. They are a little, those reviews are very trustworthy. Those are the most trustworthy reviews you can ever get. There is a price tag to be part of the map of the listings for BBB. 
starts at $655 a year, depending on how many employees you have and how many locations. Um, certain, if you're interested, definitely um, we, we have a contact there. Her name is Colleen. She'll take care of you. But um, the BBB, the accredited, being accredited with the BBB could be an option to look at as well. If the, if, um, if you, if you, if you have the funds there, what is this here? Capture easy and quick reviews from your current networking groups. Um, Miller Business Center should definitely capitalize off of this and drum up their reviews. I know they'll have one after this for myself just because of helping small to medium-sized businesses across Long Island, our backyard. This is where we all live. Um, support your local business. Get the word out. Um, I'm sure Alex, Elizabeth, and Sal would appreciate that. Absolutely. Cool. All right. Very cool. Um, anyway, the uh, my tips. This is my tips for you. Your Google My Business page. You want to download that app on your mobile device, Android, iPhone, whatever you have. Get the Google My Business app. The reason, the reason why you want it is you're going to be alerted real time when you do receive a review. You'll be able to reply to that review quickly on the mobile device. I personally like the dashboard, the desktop. It's just more real estate, easier to navigate. But that's the first thing to do. Get access to that Google My Business page. Um, I'm going to mess up the name. Elmira and Satalk it. You definitely, I don't think you do have access. You want to get access to the HVAC place. Download the Google My Business app and make sure you have primary ownership. Someone else may have downloaded, not someone else may have claimed that map listing for you and you don't have primary ownership. Um, just, I'll show you how to do that. Just kind of catch me offline and I'll make sure you have primary ownership because other companies, other people you may have done business with can hold you captive and you do not want that. What is this here? <clears throat> Create and claim your free business listings on other platforms. BBB is one of them. Yelp is free. Yellow Pages is free. Google is free. Facebook is free for now. Let's kind of let's keep it that way. Um, that map, those those map listings. Just to speak briefly about that, it's um, may not pertain to everyone here. Roxy's, yes, I don't know how you operate. I think you kind of go to different events. Um, I think they maybe hire you, the baseballs. The, the, uh, that's going to be great for you this year once the reopening and all those where you were able to get out and enjoy those, the weather, the sun's breaking. So that's awesome. But um, you want to, Get where I was going with that, but you definitely want to get control of those of your map listing this way to get reviews. Oh, the, the Google, just that three pack. That three pack, when someone's searching for your service and the more reviews you have, the more likelihood you're going to come up higher on that three pack. It's going to be catered to your local place of business. If you're brick and mortar, that's great. If you're not, if you're home based, that's fine too. But that's going to just pick up some local business for you. Increase the reviews, beat your competition, pick up that nice five to six mile radius around your current location. And that's something actionable you could do right now. We've, we at PS Digital, we get, there's lots of agencies out there, um, but we get lots of business from our Google My Business page because of our reviews. We ask them, you know, what made you choose? We read the reviews and we have, I don't know, I think 78. So definitely um, it's very, we've gotten some big accounts, but put the effort in, definitely put the effort in the quickest way, the chambers, the networking events, let's write each other reviews, kind of get that a little off the ground, get that momentum going. There is some momentum with Roxy's, I think four with destination five, um, the HVAC person may need a little assistance. Miller Business Center definitely should have, I don't know, I don't know where this, this video is going, but they should definitely have over 50. 
and um, what else got here? Looking into getting credited with the BBB platform. Yeah, a little pricey. I was kind of shocked. It was six fifty five to start. I remember it used to be a few years ago, three hundred. I think. Um, I don't know, but. I do know one thing, those reviews on the BBB platform do go a long way. So if you have, if you know, the investment is well worth it, I'm not, you know, do your due diligence. If it works for you, do it. For those service industries, I think it's important for people spending, you know, 50,000 on an extension or, you know, um, 50,000 on the bathroom or kitchen and 100,000 on an extension. That BBB accredited platform would, uh, be beneficial to that business and a, and a, and a, and a, and a definitely a great investment for them. Depends on the business. And then what else? We got another, what's going on here? Another slide. Any questions? See any questions? Again, if you want to ask a question, please use the chat feature. Make sure you say to all panelists and attendees. And I'll kind of, we have 15 minutes. I have, I know what to fill this with. I could, does anyone, my, do I have my main takeaways? Oh no, hang on a sec. What were my takeaways? <clears throat> um, I'm just gonna rattle off some things. It's very simple. It really is. Google my business, Facebook page. Make it easy for people to write reviews. Put something on your website. Put something on your email signature. Ask people. Call people. Your networking association. This, the, anything else. The review link you could get from your Google My Business page. Generate the reviews. Reply to the reviews. For those people who are concerned, we, we've been doing this for many, many years. People get concerned. I don't want to. I don't want to start getting the reviews. I'm a little nervous. Someone's. You know, they're nervous of the negative review. Don't be. I've had people, I've had people doing it for two years and two years ago, they're like, I don't want to get out there. Someone's going to say something. I'm like, don't even think about that nonsense. Just go for the, ask your best customers, the people you do business with, and don't even eliminate it from your mind and just go for it. Yeah. Um, don't get so cooped up into what bad's going to happen from it because I tell you one thing, we've had nothing bad come from it. It's been all good through the reviews. Google, Facebook, possibly Yelp. Not a big fan of Yelp. I hear a lot of bad stories about them. I'm not, you know, do you due diligence on the Yelp, the BBB, which is something it's going to definitely cost you a couple of bucks on a yearly basis, but um, well worth it if you think so. And then that's pretty much it. And once you get into a routine, <clears throat> like Chef Matthew, check this out. I'm going to show you something. This guy is relentless. He is, he is, how many reviews does he have? I, could, I haven't checked in a while. He's up to, <laughs> he's up to 132 reviews. I guarantee he replies to every single one much. A response. He's he's busy, by the way. He gets he gets very busy. His response, um, no, not I'll bust his chops a little bit. Yeah, response, their response. But people do read this, and you know, Google does make it easy to newest one day ago, three days ago, one week ago, a week ago, two weeks ago, boom, on point. I mean, this is just <clears throat> perfect. And then to watch this, you do a search. I'm looking for a private, and I'll show you the results of it. A private chef in Nassau. <clears throat> okay. Chris Lovecki comes up number one private. Here he is. He's in the he's in the three pack. So if I'm not looking for him, I'm looking for his service. Granted, he's a private chef, he doesn't have much competition. But, he, but God bless, and he knows that, but he's taking advantage of the 132 compared to this guy. I'm not knocking, I don't know Chef Bart, but all I know is I'm looking for a chef. I'm kind of I'm kind of going towards this, or even Chef Chris Lavecchia. 
I scroll down, there's Yelp. Oh, here goes Chris's business. Here goes Chris's website. Here goes Chef Matthew's website. So he just, he crushes it. And also too, what else he's probably doing, he's probably posting as well. He's doing his, his is post 16 hours ago. Yeah, he's good, March 8th. Learn more. If you hit the learn more button, it's going to go to his website. That's fine. So it kind of all comes together. Um, reap the rewards after three, six, nine, 12 months. And keep an eye out what your competition is doing. That you should set goals. To give you a goal, there is a plumber in Texas that has plumber this guy this will put things into perspective on how many reviews and this goes for us too by the way we only have 78 um, we should have way more um, we will next time we kind of kind of get into that uh, plumber plumber in texas plumbers in texas where is this one guy i'm not going to be able to find him i forget what part of town he is but he has over like three thousand reviews 3,000 reviews for a plumber. I mean, people just look at it. I think he has over a 4.6. Like game over. I'm calling him. Why, why would I look anywhere else? He's, 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 he's credible. He's entrenched. He, he works hard and I'll read a few and everything, but that's the power of reviews and the importance of it is what you make of it. What effort, what you put into it is what you get out of it. And just think if you started doing, implementing some of these strategies one, two, three years ago, where would you be today? So don't miss the boat. I'm not saying you are, um, but just definitely go for the easy reviews and just get that strategy in place and, and keep chugging along and don't ever stop. So that's pretty much, I have nine minutes if Sal doesn't mind, if anyone wants to talk about something else or not. So um, just a couple of uh, requests. Is it possible that you can send copies of this presentation? Of course. Okay, so we'll, um, we'll get your email addresses uh, from your registration and then we'll, uh, we'll send out an, an email. And if... Uh, if Brian, if you could get that to Alex, uh, he'll disseminate that across the, the attendees. Uh, Roberta said, uh, thank you so much for this most informative presentation. I learned something new each time you give a presentation. Thank you and a great job from Robert. So uh, a lot of good thumbs up. And I gotta tell you, just listening to you and watching you here, um, we have some work to do at the Miller Center for the Google My Business aspect. <laughs> I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to show you something here because I'm a big, we feel the same, like our goals are aligned with, the, we love helping small to me. We, we just, if there's anything, ask Roberta, we'll go on a Zoom call with you and just put you in the right direction, help you out. Miller Business Center, they, they have access to this. Yes, they should have, I'll, you know, I'm not going to write a review right now. I want to gather my thoughts. I had some chocolate before. I'm a little on a sugar high here. So um, I'm going to sleep while I wake up in the morning. I'm going to write them a five-star review tomorrow. Um, I had a chance to look at their website earlier today in detail. I just, I'm, ever, I'm about everything they do. And I think, um, I think we all should share that, their, our own experience with others. So when they do read, they'll be able to, um, Know, f learn more about them from 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 local business owners. There was another thing. So that's the Miller Business Center. All you do to write a review, I, and I have six minutes. So you need this is big. I forgot about this part. In order to write someone a review on Google, you have to be logged on to the Google platform. If you go on Google and you're like, I don't see this review button, write a review. It's this easy for me, cancel. I'm already logged in to Brian, to brian.ladani at gmail.com. When you're asking your customers to write a review and they click that link on your website or that email signature and they, they're like, it says sign in. What is this? This is the way to think about it. Facebook. If you go on Facebook right now, 
you cannot go on Facebook until you use a, have a username and password. You have a username and password. You sign in as Roberta. You sign in as Sal. You sign in as Danielle. You sign in as Brian Ladon. Once I'm signed into the Facebook platform, I could surf. I could write people reviews and it comes up under Brian Ladani or Danielle or Sal, whoever. Same thing with Google. In order to write a review on Google, I need, I need, or you need to, or your customer needs to sign into the Google platform. They need a username and password. The username does not need to be a Gmail account. It could be at Yahoo, at Hotmail. It could be at your business at abccompany.com. You just need, they're going to, they're going to try to push you to do a Gmail account for Google because they're, they have their best interests. I'll show you something real quick. Set up Gmail. And uh, for a child, dear Lord. For someone, oh my Lord, what am I doing? For someone else, <laughs> not for someone else, for me. Set up a Gmail, set up, create an account. Like here, here it says Gmail, but use my current email address instead. So you don't need to use their Gmail. They entice you. If you don't see this here, they you think, oh, I need a Gmail email address to sign into Google. No, you don't. You need to create a Google account with a email and a password. Done. You sign in, then you can bounce around and write the middle of business center review. One last thing, <clears throat> if you go write us a review, um, there's a, here's, we make it easy for you too. Um, there's a QR code. You could scan this QR code, write a review, share your experience on the workshop. You know, be sincere. Um, you know, that would be greatly appreciated. I think something we have on our website too. You could click uh, that. We have probably buttons all over our website that um, you could click and it'll take you right to that review page. Also too, I will even extend it further. Write something on Google, then copy and paste that, put it on Facebook, like our Facebook page, if you don't mind, if you liked what you heard tonight. Um, no pressure. If you do, great. If you don't, that's fine as well. But um that's pretty much, uh, that's my name, Brian Ladani. If anyone needs any free tips and tricks and wants to set up a Zoom, ask Roberta. We did a Zoom together. We had some fun. I, hopefully, uh, more, more importantly, she got a lot out of it. So if anyone else is looking to uh, want to tap me on the shoulder, feel free. We could do something early mornings, late evenings, in the afternoons, the weekends, whatever, all good. Yeah, so Roberta said to all attendees, don't hesitate to contact Brian. He was so gracious and helpful, even if we don't have many more reviews yet. And Elaine says, thank you, PS Digital. You guys are great and have kept me very busy with new business. So thumbs up coming from our attendees. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'm, I'm Sal. Thank you for uh, thank you. spending your time with us this evening. Thank you very much, Brian. Appreciate it. And thank you, everybody who's attended tonight. And uh, we look forward to seeing you at another Miller Business Center program.